the odds to win the World Series. Courtesy of FanDuel, the Dodgers are the favorites, followed closely by the Braves. The Astros, the third choice, followed by the Yankees. And the Astros and Yankees are the top two choices to win the American League. The Toronto Blue Jays are 18 to 1. Which leads us to an all Blue Jays edition of Harvey's Hot Takes with our friend Brian Hayes. Yes, it's all Blue Jays takes today. First of all, Brian, I'm just going to crumple this up and get rid of this bad boy. There we go. Jays could use me in the pen. Here we go. We're going to kick it off uh, with the fact that, ah, oh, Brian, the Otani pursuit. It was like it was like Atkins and Shapiro put all their eggs in one basket, and when it didn't work out, they didn't seem to have a plan B. Do you get the sense, Brian Hayes, that it's kind of a make-or-break year for Ross Atkins and Shapiro? Uh, absolutely, Jay. I, I think I can speak for the fan base when I say that. For Shapiro and Atkins, the renovations are done, and it's finally time to win. And when I speak of the renovations in particular, that's more directed at Mark Shapiro who has now been here for a long, long time. And, and we can recall the first impression that Mark had on this marketplace was effectively running Alex Anthopoulos out of town. And he's not alone in that. If you're a new executive, if you're a new president, generally speaking, that person gets inserted and they want to bring in their own people. And I don't think Alex was necessarily loving the idea of working for Mark Shapiro. But since then, he went to L.A. with the Dodgers and now he's with the Braves and he's won a World Series. And I think he's largely considered one of the three or four best GMs in baseball. And he's also a great salesman. He's great with the media, Alex Anthopoulos, something that Ross Atkins clearly is not. But when it comes to Shapiro, when he got here, he took over a really good team. That 15-16 team, they obviously went to the ALCS. Then they were going to scale it back. But he had big dreams. And I'm sure he sold Rodgers. And Rodgers was cool with the sales pitch on completely blowing up and renovating Dunedin, right? They completely changed their spring training uh, facilities, and they pumped a ton of money into it. By all accounts, state-of-the-art. That was really a big part of what Shapiro was thinking when he got here. And then it was the renovations of the Rogers Center. They have pumped in hundreds of millions of dollars. Last year, they obviously introduced us to one stage of that. This year, they will introduce us to the second stage. But that's it, as far as I know, for the big, heavy-lifting, off-the-field stuff for Mark Shapiro which means the focus needs to be very clear for him and Ross Atkins by extension. It's time to win, right? They've been in the playoffs a couple of years in a row now. It's not like this team has been a disaster. I think they've done largely a very good job in terms of moving off the Anthopolis Beeston era, reloading, building up facilities, and making it a scenario where this team is generally a very good team, but they're not truly a World Series contender. I saw the odds you posted there, Jay. I think that's actually being really, really positive, more positive than I'm at and more positive than I think a lot of Blue Jay fans are at. So Shapiro, he's been here for a decade. It's time to win something. And Atkins, it's probably even more um, at the forefront for him because he is the spokesman in terms of why it didn't work with Otani, why they didn't do much beyond that. And he keeps speaking of internal growth. Blue Jay fans don't want to hear any of this kind of stuff right now. They simply want playoff success and to significantly chase a World Series. Shapiro and Atkins, they've done a lot of heavy lifting off the field. It's time for the players to lift their spirits up and, and do something on the field. And we're going to get to the fan base in just a moment, Brian. But first, let's talk about Vladdy Guerrero Jr. A uh, bit of a quiet year last year by his standards. Unrestricted free agent in 2026. Contract negotiations ongoing, we presume. Do you feel like Vladdy Jr. will be feeling the pressure with the pending contract negotiations? I think he should be feeling the pressure in terms of getting his career back on the right track. It's time for Vladdy to prove he's not just a good ball player, but that he can lead this franchise. He can be the face of a franchise, and he can be a superstar. As you know, he's got the name, right? He's got the Hall of Fame family behind him in Vladdy Sr. He's got the personality. He's born in Montreal. All he's known is the Blue Jays. He's a very young player, but the young label needs to come to an end. No one wants to hear that anymore. He's been a major leaguer for years now, and he has the talent to truly explode and be a superstar. But if you look at the statistics, it doesn't add up, right? He sells a lot of tickets, a lot of jerseys, a lot of bobbleheads, and creates a lot of buzz and a lot of content, Vladdy Guerrero Jr. But what have you done for me lately? The last time we saw him, he made that blunder on second base in game two of the wild card. Truly one of the more 
ridiculous plays in Blue Jay history and ridiculous mistakes in Blue Jay history. We keep hearing about immaturity and youth and how he's got to grow. Well, if he wants to get paid, and I believe he does want to get paid, and I'm not sure the Blue Jays really want to pay him because they're not sure actually who he is or if he's worthy of those, you know, 300, 350, 400 million dollar type contracts because of the way he's been playing. He's got to build on his statistics. He's got to build on his power numbers, his OPS, and he's got to play like a mature ball, ball player because he has a massive amount on the line this year and into next year, right, Jay? They have team control for Vladdy over the next two years. He's likely going to be a Blue Jay between now and then. But if he wants to truly take this team to a next level, because Otani's not here, Soto's not here. This is Vladdy's team. This is Bo Bichette's team. He has got to start hitting for more power, putting up bigger numbers, and acting like a veteran. It's no longer he's a kid. He's still figuring things out. I think it's a massive platform season for Vladdy Guerrero Jr. And if the Jays are going to do anything this year, he's got to get back to where he was a couple of years ago when he was truly an MVP caliber player. Love these takes. And now let's go on to the fans, Brian. Uh, I appeared on Jason Greger's radio show this week. Had a great time with Jason. And Jason said, hey, Jay, what's the buzz for the Blue Jays uh, around Toronto right now? And I said, Jason, as far as I can tell, it doesn't exist. I'm curious because you host a daily radio show in this city. Is there any buzz whatsoever for this Blue Jay team going into the season, Brian? No, there really isn't at this point. Uh, there is zero buzz around this team, but winning is the best marketing, as you know, Jay. And ultimately, that's what they're banking on here. You want to get buzz going. You want to get a vibe around the park. You want to get people talking about the water coolers and talking over barbecues and beers on the weekends about your club. It's going to come with winning. Now, signing monster free agents and making massive transactions in the offseason can really help that. But let's face it, Blue Jay fans were taken for a ride this offseason. The Otani pursuit that ultimately fell flat was incredibly deflating, incredibly deflating. And then beyond that, they were linked probably unfairly and obviously untruthfully towards Juan Soto. But not only did they not acquire Soto, he went to the Yankees, which added insult to injury if you're a Blue Jay fan. And the fact of the matter is Justin Turner is really the only new face here that I think the average baseball fan is familiar with. And he's 39 years old. I'm not sure what you can ask out of him. So it gets back to what we said about Vladdy, Bo Bichette, George Springer, the staff staying healthy. They need to win ball games. That's their marketing plan right here. It's not about selling jerseys of a new player. It's not even about the new renovations, right? That, that landed last year. There was a lot of buzz in Toronto about going to see this new renovated park that's been around since 89. Yep. The second tier of that, it's non-existent. You know, people are not sitting there saying, I got to see what happens the second time around. I think they've played that card. So ultimately, it's imperative they get off to a good start because if they get off to a bad start and it's a really difficult schedule because of that renovation, right? They start in Tampa, then they go to Houston, then they go to Yankee Stadium. That's a really tough road trip to start the season. If they start really slow, like three and seven, two and eight, these injuries start popping up, which they already are with Romano and Swanson on the IL. Manoa obviously didn't break camp. We don't know when Gosman's actually going to start. All this hanging over this team. There's a lot of negative energy. If they have a slow start, it could be a disaster for the marketing team down at the Rogers Center in terms of ticket sales, in terms of buzz. But you flip that, they go eight and two out of the gate and come home, seven and three and come home. That place will be packed. People will be rocking. This town, they want to win it. They want to believe in this team. Oh, yeah. But it was a really tough team to believe in last year. They didn't help themselves in the offseason in terms of bringing in new pieces. So they, they got to win games. If they do that, everyone's going to be happy. If they don't, it's going to be really loud or people are simply going to scatter and apathy might quick in, uh, kick in here really, really quickly. Yeah, and that uh, beautiful, all those renovations won't look so nice uh, without butts in the seats. But speaking of great starts, what a great start to the Blue Jays season uh, for this guy, Brian Hayes. I, he's bringing the hot takes about this team every week. And don't forget, uh, he joins us every Wednesday. He's delivering those hot takes since 83, just like Harvey's has been delivering delicious burgers to Canadians since 19, well, for 65 years. I can't do the math. Hot Takes is presented by Harvey's. Customize your burger and get it delivered from our app to your door. Harvey's, it's a beautiful thing.